Welcome to another episode of A Closer Look. I'm Andrew Winter, Executive Director of Twin Pines Housing. With me today is John Meyer, local author and photographer. His book, Love Poems from Vermont, has won 11 regional and national awards, and his art is in 16 museums internationally. Glad to be here today. Thank you, Andrew. Glad to have you here. I'd like to read some poems from my book, Love Poems from Vermont, and then maybe uh, a couple from Love Poems from New England, which is a new one just uh, being released. The first one that I have uh, from Love Poems from Vermont is number 14. Uh, now these poems are quintains, which means they're five line poems, they're quite short, and they are superimposed over a photograph of um, a, a Vermont uh, setting. And let me just say that this was a 16 year endeavor. I wrote the poems first and then had a great treasure hunt around Vermont, finding scenes that I could photograph that would go with the poems. So here's one, Snow and Winter Woods, appropriate for today. Snow and Winter Woods is silent with your sound. Peace pervades below the level of a whisper. When we go out in the woods in Vermont in winter, it's the snow absorbs the sound and it's such a peaceful scene. Um, I have a, another one also that um, I think might be appropriate here um, called The Quiet in Here. And this is uh, a mountain path in central Vermont. How can we get to the quiet in here? The quiet is there. We just have to ignore the noise around it. And I think that that's, uh, that's something that we all need. We all need moments of quiet. And we all need moments when we can ignore the noise. So this is uh, uh, a metaphor for our lives. So Andrew, could you um, tell us a bit about why we're here, a bit about Twin Pines, and about um, what this uh, endeavor is aiming to do, how to help our um, folks, our colleagues, our neighbors in the Upper Valley. So Twin Pines, for those of you who don't know us, um, we are the affordable housing agency in the Upper Valley. We serve both uh, Vermont and New Hampshire sides of the river. We own, manage, and develop affordable housing. Today we house uh, between uh, 1,000 and 2,000 residents across the region. We have uh, over 500 units uh, in our portfolio, 500 rental units, another 50 odd uh, home ownership units that we provide long-term stewardship to. Um, and we really are working with folks who, um, you know, everything from home ownership to seniors, to uh, general occupancy housing, um, to, uh, transitional housing and housing for those who have a history of, of, of chronic homelessness. So really kind of everything that, that, that touches housing is, is kind of part of the work that we do. Um, and we are a 501c3 nonprofit um, uh, organization uh, and housed here in White River. But we, uh, and because we're a nonprofit, we're really dependent on the um, donors uh, to to help sustain our activities, and that's why John, it was so great of you to kind of take the opportunity to share um, your book, um, Love Homes in Vermont, uh, with donors of five hundred dollars or more uh, this season uh, in December, as we try to meet uh, some of our year-end uh, fundraising activities. Um, so it is, uh, it's, uh, it's wonderful that you've done it, and I'm glad to be here with you today to talk a little bit more about uh, Twin Pines, some of the work that we're doing, some of the work that we have done together, um, and some of the very important activities that I know uh, both you and we um, uh, find important. Thank you, Andrew. Um, if I may, uh, let me read another poem. This one is called Climbing from the Abyss. It's number 27 in Love Poems from Vermont. Climbing from the abyss, we heard the glory sound of suns. Sun's venerable rise is now your light of all I see. And in the background, we see 
uh, the Queechee Gorge, a well-known destination for those visiting Vermont and for Vermonters also. Um, I think it's a great metaphor for some periods in our lives occasionally when uh, things take a downturn and we need to climb out of the abyss. I um, have shared this with uh, Andrew and Michelle about how earlier in my own life, uh, there was a period of time for me uh, when uh, my wife and I had very, very little resources uh, to the point where um, after I was a student, I spent some time um, tr uh, traveling a, a bit, but having to uh, sleep on, on uh, train platforms, uh, et cetera, because uh, I didn't have much money. And then when we were able to get kind of a rundown farmhouse out in the country, uh, I know there were times when all the pipes froze up because the uh, plumbing really wasn't very sufficient. And um, I had to go and, and uh, break the ice out of the stream uh, running by and bring in water for Deb to put on the stove for us. Um, very fortunately, with determination uh, and a long period of time of hard work, uh, we are no longer in the abyss. We've managed financially, anyway, to climb out of the abyss. And so my sense of this and writing some of these poems is a way of sharing that experience and hopefully uh, helping to give back to some, some of those who are um, in a position where they're climbing as well. So that's climbing out of the abyss. Um, um, let me just jump in and say, you know, how much I appreciate that uh, metaphor for you and making that linkage between the poem and your own experience. I, I think, you know, you and I have talked a little bit about this, but, you know, one of the, the challenges that we find um, here in the Upper Valley and, and in, in communities across the country is just how hard it is for some folks. Uh, and how challenging it is to stay housed or to find housing that they can afford. And I think COVID has, has kind of heightened that lack of uh, precariousness uh, for a lot of people. Uh, they're they're uh, uh, a loss of employment or loss in hours away from, from being homeless. And that's where you know, we've tried to step in and provide that stability um, whether it's, you know, directly through the rental assistance uh, and the, uh, the affordable housing that we provide or through resident support services that really kind of differentiate us um, from for-profit developers um, in that we work with households and individuals to make sure that they've got connections to services and supports that they need to stay housed. Um, because it, it is, it, the world is sometimes a, a challenging place as we look to kind of climb out of the abyss. Yes, Andrew, and particularly in the Upper Valley where housing is so expensive. That's why it's near and dear to my heart, uh, Twin Pines' mission and how Twin Pines is helping uh, to alleviate some of that. Um, let, me, let me read another poem, if I may. This one's called Inner Clouds. It's number 33. Sometimes inner clouds block my sight, and I ask, where are you? The reply, slow down and wait for sunrise. So again, metaphorically, this is a poem about inner clouds, inner difficulties, and sometimes we might not be in the abyss, but we might have a, a period, short or longer, of inner clouds, uh, and we need to clear those clouds and move on. And in terms of uh, what Andrew just described, uh, Twin Pines is so helpful to many people in doing that in the Upper Valley. Yeah, I, I will say, I think for many folks, the pandemic um, has heightened that sense of social isolation. And one of the things that we've worked really hard to do is to try to figure out a way to bridge that gap. And again, resident supportive services have been able to reach out to residents, uh, particularly our households who are seniors, to make sure that they are uh, you know, getting that kind of personal connection uh, that um, is so important at this uh, isolating time. Thank you, Andrew. Here's another poem, number 46. It's called Joy's Opportunity. Sorrow can etch the stone, but joy's, opportuni joy's opportunity returns with each sunrise. So after writing this poem, I wanted to find a place in Vermont 
that could illustrate the poem. And I looked far and wide and then discovered that down um, near uh, Bellows Falls, where the Villas Bridge is, there's a cliff that is uh, plunging down into the Connecticut River. And there are some Abenaki um, carvings there on the side of the cliff. I had to travel there a number of times because the lighting wasn't right to even see those images of those uh, petroglyphs, Vermont petroglyphs, Vermont's only petroglyphs. And um, now some folks in, um, in the Bellows Falls area are trying to make this into a heritage site where these carvings will be protected. But um, it, is a, it is a message of hope and opportunity, even with sometimes that we have sorrowful moments. Uh, so that is Joy's opportunity. Um, let me um, transition a bit into another very important topic uh, that is illustrated by the poem, Can Love Save the Planet? Can love save the planet? Consume less, love more, desire, want less? One by one, maybe. So this is one of the great questions of our time. And I know that um, another thing that's near and dear to my heart with Twin Pines is that part of Twin Pines' mission has to do with sustainability. Andrew, could you talk for a moment about uh, sustainability and how Twin Pines pursues that? Great, thanks, John. One of the things that we've strived to do with creating both new housing as well as renovating existing housing is to find ways to reduce our carbon footprint. And we've done this with our new construction by um, really trying to design super energy efficient buildings. Um, one of the, the great benefits of the work that we do is we're able to uh, access some funding that allows us to do what are called passive house certified buildings, buildings that use 80% uh, less energy to heat and cool them than a typical uh, code compliant building. And so our new properties, whether it's in Lebanon, whether it's in Hanover, whether it's in White River Junction, have, um, have been able to achieve this, this, uh, this standard. Um, we've also found ways to integrate solar into much of the housing that we're doing. Virtually all of the new housing that we're creating actually has solar panels on it that help offset some of the energy used to heat and cool the buildings. That's terrific. We recently completed a, uh, a, a, a building, a 29 unit building in Lebanon that is one of the very first net zero uh, multifamily buildings um, in this region of the country. Um, 380 solar panels that provide all the heating, uh, all the electricity to heat and cool and provide the electrical needs of the residents who live there. We're really excited about it. It's, it's, we're trying to lead uh, by example. That is excellent. Net zero, of course, is where the um, housing does not require external energy. It produces its own energy. That's wonderful. Yep. Um, another poem here is number 55 called Sharing. Um, sharing, no choice but to give whatever love one has to strangers who may be difficult to love. And I know another thing that uh, I love so much about Twin Pines housing is that you do a lot of sharing. So Andrew, perhaps you could tell us some of the uh, additional ways that Twin Pines uh, exhibits sharing. Sure, yeah, I mean, I think one of the great things that we're able to do, and I'm coming back to our resident support uh, team, is make sure that the generosity of Vermonters, Granite Staters, uh, in terms of food assistance is, is made available to, uh, to the residents of Twin Pines Housing. So um, we are able to bring in uh, food drops uh, that uh, serve the folks who live in our housing uh, so that they're able to, to, to uh, access um, healthy foods that um, keep them um, fed and sustained in the long term. Because it, uh, it is so important, particularly at this time, that we have something like that. Wonderful, Andrew. Thanks. Um, let me read a, a poem or three from my uh, book that's coming out soon uh, called Love Poems from New England. And this was just like the treasure hunt in Vermont, only across the six states of New England. 
This one's called, called A World in a Lover's Eye. Hear a symphony in a whisper, feel a bonfire in an ember, taste an ocean in a drop, smell a landscape in a blade of grass, see the world in a lover's eye. So that's The World in a Lover's Eye, which is number one on uh, the first poem in Love Poems from New England. And let me read uh, one more here called Shout. Um, Shout out the best news that's ever happened to your heart. Keep shouting. So we need to celebrate the good things when they come. And of course, Twin Pines is one of those great things that's happening to the Upper yeah. Valley. Um, you know, John, I'll, if, if I can, I'll, I'll yeah. shout this. I mean, one of the things that, you know, I have to remind myself about um, in a year when there has been so many challenges and, um, you know, with the with with COVID nineteen the pandemic, uh, people suffering loss of of employment, and the like, um, it is hard sometimes to take a moment. And I've had to have forced myself to take a moment to appreciate all that we've gotten done. Um, this year, we um, are completing renovations on a hundred unit property uh, wow. in West Lebanon uh, that we purchased in twenty nineteen called uh, the Village of Crafts Hill and. You know, why, why is that significant? Well, you know, this is an occupied property where we've had to try to uh, renovate that property um, in, during a pandemic. Um, so it's, it's, it means that we've had to move people out temporarily. It means that, and, and boy, it has been, um, it has been, it would have been challenging in the best of times and try layering on top of that COVID. And so um, I appreciate the fact that my, uh, you know, my, my team has done it. Uh, we've had a great contractor, North Branch uh, Construction, who's been able to work with us to get it done. But most importantly, um, I, you know, I appreciate the forbearance and the work and the patience that our uh, residents have shown in kind of what's a would be a disruptive thing, uh, construction process in the best of times, and is uh, really um, you know, really sort of amazing when you add on top of it COVID-19. So we, we, we're finishing that up, but we also finished up a new project in Hanover uh, across from the high school where 24 um, units of senior housing uh, and housing for the disabled was completed this year. And again, with COVID, um, it is wonderful to, to be able to finish that as well and welcome people into a new energy efficient building um despite all of the things that are going on yeah sounds like a great project let me um uh let me read one more poem from love poems from vermont number 60 uh and it's entitled please accept me as i am please accept me as i am so world's illusion dissipates and you spiral me past any separation so i know uh Michelle Kersey, as one of your colleagues from Twin Pines, has said that accepting people where they are, coming alongside them, good and bad, uh, with good and bad, is really essential to what you folks are doing. So, um, Andrew, uh, perhaps you have some words of wrap-up that could summarize our, um, our, our session here, and uh, I really appreciate it everything you've done for the Upper Valley and Twin Pines. Yeah, John, I appreciate it. And again, you know, I, I appreciate the work um, that, that you are supporting with, um, with your book, uh, Love Poems from Vermont, uh, as a gift to everybody who uh, gives $500 or more uh, to Twin Pines between now and the end of the year. It is a wonderful way to support that work, um, and we really appreciate it. Um, and appreciate your generosity um, throughout the years in supporting the work of Twin Pines. So thank you, John. Um, it's great to be here. Great to talk uh, with you about your poems. And it's great to, um, uh, you know, um, uh, talk a little bit about Twin Pines. I will um, share one last quote uh, from a resident at, at, at the Village of Crafts Hill, that 100-unit project I was talking about. Tell them this, tell them that I was the original tenant and I've been living here for many years with a 70s, 1970s version of everything. I'm grateful that this is so beautiful and has the heat 
and has all the hard work that they did through the sickness. I am thrilled I can reach the top shelf of this cabinet. I've never had an apartment at my level before. Never before have I had a brand new apartment. I'm flabbergasted. I just run around thanking everyone. And that's uh, from Judith, one of our residents there. Um, so even in a year of COVID, even in a year with all of the challenges, um, we're there and we'll be there uh, in the future.